morning. Good morning. You guys know me. I think I'm Moose Herring. Uh, I think our short quick topic this morning is going to be on bike crashes, how do you avoid it, how do you manage it. So just some hopefully key tips if you do go down what you should and should not do. So I'm going to show you a quick video that I found very entertaining on slow twitch. Danny's going to run this. So this is in Brazil. Not every bike crash ends up this way. So watch this road right here. And you'll see a cyclist and an unfortunate truck. Watch this roadway right here. Here, here it comes. Here it comes. Yeah, security camera. Here comes the bike. Oh! <laughs> We wish it was like that, but it's not. So we can switch back to PowerPoint. So most bike crashes, you end up hitting hard stuff. So a little bit different there. So our goal today is to talk about how to manage a bike crash, what you should be thinking about before you go out, what you should be thinking about if it, if it, if it were to happen. And I'll try to run these. Four. Step number one, the bike crash, 
crash who's down? How many riders are down? Is it, is it a string of five or six, or is it just one? How bad are the injuries? And that takes a little, that takes a little bit of assessment, okay? And, and, and then you've got to make sure you know where you are, how bad the traffic is, okay? Next, do not move a cyclist off the road, out of the ditch, if they're having neck or back pain, or if they, if, 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 if they are out cold. Okay? So if somebody's laying there and they're unconscious, you should not yank them up and that kind of stuff. Right? If they're laying on their side, laying on their back, laying, uh, laying, laying face down, you've got to stop and say, am I going to hurt them more by moving them? Right? But if, as a general rule, if they are out cold, you should be very conscious of how you move their back or their neck. Okay, so don't move a cyclist that's down who is out, or if you're concerned about a neck or back injury, you can make that injury worse. Okay, how are we going to assess the injuries? We've now figured out how many riders there are. We're going to look at these injuries. We're going to look and make sure either cars can see us, or somebody riding you, or somebody else in the road, so you're not getting hit by a car. Right? You're going to take a deep breath. Why? Because everybody's usually under panic. Right? And, and you should think ABC. Right? Any first aid issue, you've got to think about ABC. Do they have an airway? Let me make a suggestion. First thing you do is call 911. Well, you're... No. No. First thing you're going to do is, is, is you're, going to, you're going to basically assess the situation. Right? Right? And you want to make sure that, you know, oncoming cars can see it and all that stuff. Right. If you want to get EMTs, we're going to get them to move into the uh, okay. area as soon as possible. So make sure oncoming cars can see you. Okay? Mm -hmm. Make absolutely sure. Next, make sure if that athlete is down, okay, you want to make sure that they're breathing. That may mean rolling them over, over, over care. So, so you should be thinking ABC, right? Do they have an airway? Are they breathing? And do they have pulses? Right? Sometimes that means having a long roll supporting their, their, their head and neck. But this should be step one. Okay? Hopefully you've got somebody riding with you that's called 911 or called their mother or, or, or something. So that all can be happening at once. Okay? But make sure you're not putting yourself at risk. Make sure they have an airway, breathing, and, 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 and impulsive. Everything else becomes secondary. Right? Okay? Now, you, next thing you're going to do is assess the rider, right? Likely you're out there one, two, three, sometimes five or six. If you're, if, if you're riding in a pack, somebody's watching for traffic, somebody's called 911, somebody's going to be looking at whoever's down, okay? you got to take a deep breath why it's stressful. And if you're panicked, that person you're working with is likely going to be panicked too, right? So we start always with the head. Are they knocked out? Do they remember? Do they know where they are? That's key. So simple questions like, are you okay? Right? Do you have a headache? Do you know where you are? Do you know what happened? If they say, I don't remember the fall, I don't know what happened, I've got a splitting headache, you know we've got to get help there quick. Right? So we're going to assess the head. Okay? If, if, if they have a major crack or crush or abrasion on the side of their helmet, that's, that's basically considered a significant head injury until you prove me otherwise. So look for trauma on the helmet and the face and that kind of stuff. So you're going to ask them, always start with the head. Right? You're looking at, are they breathing? Okay? Next, you go from the head, you go down to the neck and the back. Okay? If they're laying flat, you can have them gently nod their head up and down. Are they moving their arms and their legs? Is all that okay? Right? So we've gone from the head to the neck and the back. Now we're going to see, are you breathing? Right? Do they have popping, popping, clicking? Can they take a deep breath? So if their head's okay, their neck and back are okay, and they're breathing okay, we can kind of take a sigh, make sure everything is okay. Right? Now we're going to... Belly pain is more for internal injuries. Okay? That's less of, what, of, of, of hopefully what you guys have been doing on the scene. So, questions about that? How about you're just by yourself? Mm -hmm. and, you're, and you 
just fell off. We were trying to figure out whether you're okay to go. I mean, you're. It's I a great question. You had been knocked out. I mean, you had it. What's a good way? To, I mean, it's the same thing, right? You just do that to yourself. I mean, yeah. Kind of. mm -hmm. So if you go down by yourself, right? Which most of us, well, not I mean, a lot of us ride by, you know, ride by ourselves. One, are you awake and alert? And if you're not awake and alert, it's not going to matter. Right? <laughs> right? Two, if you are awake and alert, are, are you in a situation where you're going to get clipped by another car or something like that? So you got to get yourself to a safe spot. Right? If your head's okay and you can gently move your neck around and you can move your arms and legs, you got to drag yourself off the road to get in a safe situation. But in my, yeah. Yeah, I guess. But so my helmet's broken, and I can't remember the fall. I guess I'm going to be talking to somebody to get me. Right. Yeah. And okay. if something's crunching or popping, or if you have a bad headache, or, or if, if you look at your helmet and the whole size cave in, get on the phone. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Got it? Yeah. Okay. So um, we've looked at the head, we've looked at the neck and the back, we've looked at the lungs, okay? Do they have some belly pain? Now, hopefully that patient at that at that point, if the neck and the back are okay, head's okay, you can sit them up, right? If they sit up and get really, really dizzy, then you gotta go back laying flat, right? So, you sit up, and once you get to this point here, I'm fine with them moving off the road or out of the freeway or into a safer spot, right? But I'd be cautioning you against moving them until you go through these steps. Okay, but you got to make that decision based on traffic and that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, next, we we have gone through our airway, breathing, circulation. We know their heads okay. They have been knocked out. Our helmet's not crushed. Uh, uh, lungs are okay. Once you sit them up, they're not lightheaded. Now we're looking for stuff that doesn't look right. Right. You guys that have hurt your AC joint, your clavicles, no. You get deformity, you get, get popping, click and lock. And most of the time you get that sense once you have sat them up and they're able to take a deep breath and you can take a deep breath. Right? So common issue with cycling, clavicle injuries, AC joints, wrist, and we all, you know, all of us have had road rash that have suffered being on the pavement. Right? Road rash is not, not a big deal, but they're all the time. Uh, uh, drilling's pumping, so they may not sense something's bad. That's kind of up, 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 up to you to see that. Oh, I'm a classic case example of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I crashed, I broke my shoulder blade, my collarbone, my helmet was cracked, but I really want to finish my 90 mile bike ride. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a little bit of shock, probably. Right. And I told everybody I was fine. It's always shock. <laughs> right? So you go, you've done your assessment. Hopefully move them to a safe spot. Now they're sitting up a little bit. You do your secondary assessment, right? And hopefully by that time somebody's on, on, on their way to pick you up. Okay. So we're going to get to a safe area. We're going to calm everybody's nerves, and, and, and hopefully you call an ambulance or a car or somebody to come get you. Okay. Now what? <laughs> When do you decide to get back on the bike and ride away? And, and this is the most common mistake that I see in most cyclists that are hurt badly. Okay? We've had a primary crash. We get back in, you know, we get back on the bike, and everybody said, are you, are, you know, are you with it? And then we have a secondary fall where that cyclist takes out somebody else because they're not with it. Okay? So how do you make that assessment? Always cheat on the sign of being safe. Don't have somebody to call, hopefully somebody knows where you are, always call and say, come get me, game's over, right? A lot of people get hurt secondarily by getting back on their bike and saying, I'm tough, I can ride home, or I'm tough, I can finish my ride, right? You can cause more damage by doing, by doing that than your pride getting in a car and, you know, even going home. So, if your head's okay, you haven't been knocked out, you're thinking, you know, put it through there, breathing's okay, you're well, you know, you figure the lungs are not okay, and nothing's cracking and popping, it is okay to get back on your bike. Okay, but I would be very quick to pull the trigger and say, I'm done. Better to be safe than sorry. None of us are making our mortgage off racing. 
right? Those be fun. We, we can take it seriously, but don't be a knucklehead, right? So items for care. All if you're having any type of head injury, headache, and that kind of stuff, go to the ER. Have them look at you. There's all all kind of neuro neuro, neuro tests they can do to say yeah you're okay or no you're not okay. Every year people die because they have a head injury. There is a 30 minutes to an hour period where they feel okay, but their brain's still full of blood, right? Then after that, they're done, right? So head injury, vision trouble, bad headache, loss of consciousness, go to the ER, okay? If it's road rash, abrasion, something's crooked, you can go to the ER, you can get an ortho on call, but you gotta get secondary care, right? Questions about that? Only thing I would add, going back a little Good. bit, is that... Let me go back and slide. No, no, okay. When you're, um, after your first assessment mm -hmm. and as you're moving through your stuff, I would sort of keep reassessing mm -hmm. the person a bit because I remember that last Great time call. where, you know, like I thought, like mm -hmm. you thought you were okay. I was with people. Ten minutes later, I was in a different place and I don't know. Great concept. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> um, yeah. Yeah. Keep checking. Right. That's a great idea. Alright, that's it. Questions for me? Please. Everybody needs to wear a road ID. That's a great comment. I was working in the UD the night that like Fowl was brought in. He was a cat racer and nobody recognized him. The attending on call he was one of his good psychic buddies. But he was unconscious, he had no ID. His, his face, face was crushed. His face was so badly damaged, no one could recognize him. His wife didn't know where he was, she was calling all over the place. Died Several mistakes were made that night. Num number like, one, the group decided to bail. Mike felt like he had a key train ride he had to get in. Instead of going inside, he left his group, right? His garment said he rode by his house driveway twice. So he questioned himself, to, you know, to, to twice. So one, the weather was bad. He may not have made, you know, made, 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 decision. To his road ID he had, okay? Couldn't find it. Well, when he hit the truck, his wrist was so badly broken, the EMT guys cut it off. And they, they found it down, 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 around the road. Okay? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He didn't have his phone with him. So then he, he did go to the ER, and his wife two hours later said, where's Mike? And then he started to call him around. His option two is you keep a small, foldable wallet with a copy of your ID and your phone and throw. Yeah, and I would encourage you. shows in your pocket pretty good. I can't yeah. my, uh, my, my This is in my jersey, so right. I go in and I got it. You can stick your info in your helmet. Huh. Right? So when your helmet helmet comes off, if they can't, can't figure out who you are, hopefully your helmet's attached to your head, right? Mm -hmm. If right. they can't figure out who you are, once the helmet comes off. But extremely road IDs are, right. are a fantastic ID, but in the field, sometimes those get snipped off. Well, we're trying to educate, I mean, I've been a paramedic for 15 years, and we're trying to educate them how to look for these things. It's fantastic. Especially for cyclists and yeah. yeah. So, road ID, you can also put like previous injury, like for instance, or illness, yeah. like I took a concussion and asthma. And they also, yeah. they also have a web based option. History. That's correct. And Chesterfield now is aware of that. So awesome. they can go online and get that. Okay. That, 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 that's great. Go ahead. Um, how about talking about um, a little bit about what are the key reasons for crashing? What what causes the crashes mostly? Okay, so one get back to that first slide being being you know prepared. Mm -hmm. Tubes, tires not great, brakes not great. Key really becomes number one, you lose focus, right? You're riding in a group, you're set on long, you're hour two, three, four, five, six, and you, and you, and you, and you lose focus. But the, you know, probably the most common cause we're seeing now is distracted drivers. Mm. You know, if you look driving down the road in your car, everybody has their head in their lap, right? <laughs> so you're likely not going to be able to vent that, except for one, riding on the trainer, she's going to vent that, two, riding in larger groups. Right? And three, not making bad decisions about riding during bad weather or dusk. Okay? But most accidents we're seeing now are cyclists that are hit from behind by distracted drivers. 
So choose your area where you ride safely, right? Ride in groups, that helps. Blinky lights, even during the daytime, hopefully help pick us by deep one. But what scares me to death is somebody not, you know, not paying attention. The bright colors. It drives me crazy when I That's see other people out there that don't That's wear great bright colors because we can control that. Right. It's a great one. And you can control the bike then. To answer your question, yes. Okay. Other questions? How about, how about, how about falling with style? I, I've heard that you can, you can roll and things like that. Roll through. It's hard. You're going down. It's happening so fast. You right. Yeah. 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 It's hard. I mean, most of the you see your shoulder because most of us, when they go down, they're going to protect their head and their hands. So they're going to kind of go. You know, they're, That's not they're all going. that bad. Well, right. Prepare to go. Yeah. Well, I used to ride horses as well, but they used to make us do the off season. It's kind of some rolling on that, so you learn how to tuck and roll as well. Because most people instinctively put their hand out. Yeah. And I found when I was working with uh, rodeo riders, actually, the single biggest injury was Shoulders. the lacrimon yeah. and this. Shoulders. They put their hand out. So if you learn to tuck and roll, and not be and like, we just roll on the mats and then we sort of hop over obstacles. Mm -hmm. Like, it's hard for us older people, yeah. but kids can certainly. I, I, I think I'd rather put my hand and break my collarbone than roll while I'm hitting the land on my head. No, or you'll be yeah. much safer talking roll. Yeah, I agree. But if you want to rush your dad on the long score, so I'll teach you how yeah, to roll. Yeah, that's a good idea. Jesus. Stuff mm -hmm. happens so fast, so. But you can learn. You know, yeah, there's not even time to think. I mean, I mean that's we're on the ground about what happens. But it has to be instinctive. Yeah, but the thing is, practice something to get that instinctive when you have this moving frequently. Other mountain biking, you can practice that though, because you'll fall a lot. You want to practice. All right, I think you guys have a ride in you. Go have fun. Be safe. Thank you.